speaking in the appropriate way. You can get all sorts of things churned up in, in, the, in the unconscious minds of your listeners. And by watching them as well, you can extract out their unconscious desires. So now, I'm speaking to you all, and you're all irritated because your life has been really awful for 15 years. And I'm saying this, and I'm saying that, and I'm saying this, and I'm saying that. You know, and then I say something, maybe I say something uh, initially uh, dismissive of Jews. And you're all mad, and there's two or three people who go, yeah. And then I think, oh, well, you know, that's kind of an interesting response. And then, you know, I lay out a couple more ideas, and some of them don't get any response. And others, you know, people perk right up. And, and I'm not stupid, and I'm trying to get the bloody attention of the crowd. And so, if I do that 50 times, the crowd's going to tell me an awful lot about what they want. Especially if I'm willing to follow them. And I can do that easily, because especially if I can start to work the crowd a little bit, because I can capitalize on their emotional, on their emotional, capitalize on their emotions and the display of that emotion, and I can learn to play that. And then that turns into a positive feedback loop. And so Hitler's informing the audience, and the audience is informing Hitler, and that's why Jung believed that Hitler embodied the shadow of the German people. So that's another reason why you should be careful what you say and why you say it you know, and why you're looking for attention and all of those things and actually what's motivating you and actually what's motivating the people who are listening to you because God only knows where it might go if you're not careful well actually we do know where it goes if you're not careful and it's not pretty that's for sure and to think that we've learned anything from that it's like no, that, that's not right we haven't learned a damn thing from it so, because we don't want to understand it. Now, these guys were all concerned with that sort of thing. They were highly concerned with it. Now, Bin Swanger and Boss had both been influenced by Freud and by Jung. You can see in the bottom right-hand corner there, that's uh, Boss with Jung. And, and that's Bin Swanger on the left and Boss at the top there. So, you know, they're, they're pretty thoughtful-looking guys, and they were pretty damn smart. And they were quite philosophically oriented, and they had both studied Heidegger, and they both studied Husserl, who were German philosophers. Uh, Heidegger actually got tangled right up in, into the Nazi movement, and you know his philosophy has been cast under a cloud of suspicion, perhaps a well-deserved cloud of suspicion, as a consequence of his cooperation with the Nazis. So, it wasn't only stupid people who got tangled up in this, it was pretty much everybody who got tangled up in it. And one of the things you might, be, might think about, and this is worth thinking about, is that if you were there, for any one of you, there's a 90% chance that you would have got tangled up in it. You, know, you wouldn't have been the person who rescued the gypsies. It's like, forget that. It's like, unless you think that you know, you're heroic far beyond the average, and I would be very, very careful about assuming that. You could assume instead that you would have been swept along with the crowd just like everyone else. Because everyone else was. Alright, now, part of what these guys were trying to figure out is, in some sense, there were two things. There was the, the, the function and structure of belief systems, and then the nature of that which transcends a belief system. Okay, so, you know, what transcends a belief system is what you don't know if you use that belief system, right? Because there are things outside of your belief system. And they have a nature as well. And you usually run into those sorts of things when you make a mistake. And things don't happen the way you expect them to or want them to or desire them to. So, and then the other problem they're trying to solve in some sense is, well, what's the appropriate mode of behavior for an individual in relationship to belief systems and to the world that transcends the belief systems? And the reason they were interested in that is because they thought, well, maybe it would be a good, a good idea if our belief systems didn't get so damn pathological. Because if they do, then, you know, six million people end up in ovens or the equivalent, and 120 million people end up dead in battlefields, and, you know, that doesn't count the Stalin massacres or Mao, who were, you know, made Hitler in some sense look like an absolute amateur. I mean, Stalin starved six million people to death in the Ukraine in the 1930s, and he was just warming up. You know, I don't know how many, how many of you have heard of the Ukraine famine? How many of you haven't? 
Yeah, well, think about that. You know, how many of you knew Mao killed 100 million people? How many of you didn't? Yeah, well, you might think about why you don't know that. You know, you know about the damn Nazis, but you don't know about the horrors that the communists perpetrated. It's worth thinking about why. Because the communists, especially the Maoists, man, those people were brutal. So, it's really important, like, of all the things we could possibly learn psychologically from the 20th century, and is what these characters in the 50s were concentrating on. It's like, okay, things can go powerfully sideways. It was quite a shock to everyone, because in some sense, you know, everyone was pretty thrilled at the beginning of the 19th century that religion, classical religion beliefs, had crumbled. You know, the Marxists said, well, the damn religions were only there to oppress the poor anyways, and to keep the priesthood and the aristocracy in power. You know, you'll, I'm sure you learn plenty of that in your in your classes, that sort of thinking, you know, it's power economics related thinking and it's typical of, of, of what, what would you say? Um, intellectually manipulative left-wing thinkers, I would say, that's basically the, the routine, you know, they reduce everything to a single damn motivation, it's usually economics or power, and then they explain everything from that perspective, it's like, it's so boneheaded, it should be illegal. Anyways, 